Hello, um, I'm Ronald Witt. I'm a medical oncologist from the Erasmus uh, Medical Center Cancer Institute in the Netherlands, Rotterdam. And I was involved in the Keynote 45 study. Uh, the Keynote 45 study was a randomized phase 3 trial investigating the uh, checkpoint inhibitor pembrolizumab versus investigated choice of chemotherapy, finflunin, docetaxel or paclitaxel in patients with metastatic bladder cancer who had been exposed to one line of chemotherapy, platinum-based, uh, so cisplatin, gemsartibine, or carboplatin, gemsartibine, or the MFAC regimen. And again, patients were randomized uh, between pembrolizumab and, the, uh, and chemotherapy. Primary endpoint of the study was uh, to show a survival benefit uh, by the use of pembrolizumab versus uh, second-line chemotherapy. The key endpoints of the study was, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, to test for survival benefit, and the study was positive. There was approximately three months survival benefit by uh, the use of pembrolizumab, and um, uh, there were also fewer side effects, fewer uh, treatment-related adverse events. If you focus on create three or four toxicities, it was 15% on Pembro and it was 15% uh, with the use of chemotherapy. So the uh, superior uh, survival and the uh, superior uh, health-related side effects were uh, in favor of Pembrolizumab, uh, rendering that a new standard of treatment. Now, equally important is to look at, uh, at uh, health-related quality of life. So what was also investigated in this study was quality of life by using the URTC 30 questionnaire and as a complementary investigation, the EQ D5 was also investigated. Now the D5 is mostly used for health economic modeling and the D30 questionnaire is, is used for uh, testing the functioning domains and symptom domains. And the the poster that I presented this ESCO meeting is, is really tailored on these C30 results. Now what was done in this study was that the questionnaires were completed electronically by the patients uh, just before the new cycle and before they had discussed with the physicians about the results of their treatment and CT scans to avoid any bias. And the questionnaires were completed every cycle during the first four cycles and then every other cycles afterwards. Key endpoints for quality of life was the result uh, by week 15, as well as time to deterioration of quality of life. Now, what was found in the study, that was that by week 15, the quality of life had uh, completely stabilized by uh, the use of pembrolizumab whereas there was a uh, robust and significant statistical significant worsening uh, by the use of chemotherapy. The same was true with the Kepler-Meyer plot of the time to deterioration, uh, which was also statistically significant in favor of pembrolizumab, um, hazard ratio 1.70. We also looked at the uh, results by disease status and what was found that in patients whose disease worsened, there was only a very mild deterioration in, in quality of life in patients receiving pembrolizumab, but there was a tremendous drop in quality of life in patients receiving chemotherapy. In those patients who did well on pembrolizumab, uh, there was an improved quality of life, uh, whereas uh, even in responding patients to chemotherapy, there was a deterioration. So taking everything together, all the measures that we did were statistically significant in favor of pembrolizumab. So it's the survival benefit, it is the, the, the adverse event profile, and, as, and it is the quality of life that was all superior in terms of benefit by the use of pembrolizumab. And I think that makes it a new standard of care in patients uh, with bladder cancer that qualify for second-line treatment. And I, that's my presentation. That is actually my poster.